Today, I wanna to go over how you can make your timelines interactive in PowerPoint using a tool called Zoom for PowerPoint. So let's hop into an example timeline right now uh, based off of one that Kevin made uh, earlier this week. Uh, it, I've changed some of the names and facts and stuff like that so it's not personally identifying, uh, but let's take a look at what we have. And so on the first slide, we have kind of the main timeline, all the facts that we want to discuss on it. And what we've done for this particular client is we've built interactivity into it. And so if you take a look at slide one, that's the timeline. The rest of them uh, are the individual pages of the timeline that show up as icons underneath each fact. So the way we make it interactive is a tool called Zoom for PowerPoint. And let me show you how that works by inserting uh, the last image onto this slide and so that way we can go through the steps together. So I'm gonna go on to slide two and let's say that this is the location of an accident that had occurred. And so let's go to insert pictures and on my desktop I have saved uh, a map. Let's go to the map there. And it takes up most of the slide but I always like maps to take up the entire slide if I can. And as long as I'm not cutting off any evidentially significant information. So there's my timeline slide. And one of the things that happened when I imported this image was that the design ideas tab uh, popped open. So today you're getting a twofer and you get a second tip today, how to turn off the automatic design ideas. That's super annoying. Also something that Kevin discovered earlier this week. So this design idea tab, it opens up every time I'm working. And a lot of times when I'm working, I've got the format tab uh, pane open. I've got the animations pane open. And it's just like a third pane that opens and it drives me insane. To turn that off, come to the file section and go to options. From there, you can scroll down and PowerPoint Designer uh, has intelligent services and there's a box for automatically show me design ideas. Uncheck that, your life will be forever improved. Hit OK and you're done. So that will no longer appear. So now we've got this slide uh, and that's the slide uh, two that has the map on it. And that's the date of the crash, 2-4. I wanna put a little thumbnail of that scene onto my timeline. And what I'll do is I'll come to insert and instead of inserting a picture, I'm gonna insert a zoom. And there's a couple of different types and the type that I want is a slide zoom. So I'll hit that, I get a pop-up window and it asks me which uh, slide do I want to zoom to. And I wanna slide zoom to slide number two and I'll insert it. And it gives me a little thumbnail of what that slide looks like and I can use that and I can maneuver it and resize it. I'm going to hold down shift so I don't accidentally change the dimensions of this. And then all the thumbnails on this timeline have a little bit of a border. And let's do like a dark gray, maybe a navy. And let's do a drop shadow. Kevin likes this one so I'll do that one to make it all match. The one other thing that I'll do now that I have the thumbnail for this slide on it is I wanna change one more thing to make it work uh, exactly as intended. I'm gonna click on the zoom thumbnail and go to the zoom tools ribbon and format it. And up here, there is a return to zoom option. So these are the options to so think of it like transitions, transitions, you can change the duration uh, and there may be some parameters you can change. This is just like that. You can either use the zoom to transition or you don't have to use the zoom to transition and there's also a return zoom tool which i think is really great so now let's go to slide one hit f5 to get this presentation started i'm going to click on uh, the thumbnail there you can see that the cursor changed from an arrow uh, to the finger so now i can touch it so let's do that the zoom to transition brings me right to slide two i'm actually on slide two and now, since we have the return zoom option turned on, if I left click or if I hit the right arrow key, it's gonna take me back to slide one. So it takes me to another slide and back, right? So let's take a look behind the hood. Let's take a look at this medical illustration that uh, we're using for this case. It's actually on slide eight, right? So keep that in mind. Let's hit F5, start the show. Let's click on this zoom to transition on slide eight. We're gonna see that slide, we're on slide eight now. And now when we go back and click again, it brings us back to slide one, which is the timeline. So that's what that return to zoom uh, does. It brings you back to the place where you came from. So now I can, from here, since we've set up all the rest of the images to do this kind of zoom uh, transition, I can go to any of these medical records, 
go to this one and we have a call out built with some highlights that automate. Now I click anywhere to go back and I can go back to the timeline. So this is useful not so much in an opening where you would normally just go and click your clicker and go from one through 30 or however many slides that you have in your opening. But this is more useful in a situation where you're working with an expert who has reviewed all the medical records. If it's a damages expert, the course of recovery, or if it's a proximate cause expert, they could talk about the different documents that are relevant for that part of the timeline. And what's especially useful for this is after the direct examination, on redirect, you can get up and say, okay, there was some questions about what happened between the initial vi visit with the orthopedic surgeon and why there was such a delay between the visit to the neuro. Let's talk about the things that happened. First, that there was the MRI cervical scan. Let's take a look at that. You can go there, you can see it. You can then go back to the timeline and then say three days later, immediately after those results came back, uh, he got a follow-up visit with the ortho and then the ortho said he needs to go to the neuro and so then the neurosurgeon then sees him and here's what happens, right? So now you can jump back and forth bouncing from the timeline to the underlying medical records. And essentially what you're doing here in PowerPoint is creating like a mini trial presentation app. And so we've done this a lot of times with uh, timelines, we've been doing it for years, uh, but now this new Zoom 2 animation makes it a lot simpler to do because uh, the things that we used to have to do was we would sometimes use transition to get that kind of Zoom animation effect and we put Zoom transition on say slides 2 through 8. Um, and then we would also create a transparent box uh, that was clear so that way when the attorney clicked on some space on the screen uh, it would send them back to slide one and we'd have to set up the slideshow so that it wouldn't go into all the slides it was just showing from slide one to slide one loop to escape so that's all the steps that we used to do to be able to make an interactive timeline the zoom to uh, transition uh, it makes it a lot easier to do that with a lot less clicks and a lot less kind of workarounds it's much more direct uh, and this is what we will be doing from now on to make our interactive timelines. And so uh, I'm really looking forward to being able to use this uh, going forward. If you have any questions about how we built this timeline and the interactivity involved in it, please feel free to leave it in the comments. Uh, and also, if you are using this Zoom transition effect already, I'd love to hear about it and see what you're using it for, especially if you're not using it for a timeline. Thanks for watching.